There's a little old town at the place where the rivers meet. It's kind of a special place, where the pace of time is marked by the turning of the seasons, and prosperity is measured in the friendships we have made and kept, where family trees grow tall and the roots of history run deep. Our precious haven, our home, our little old town, this part of the river has been home to Indian cultures back to ancient times, first seen by European explorers over 300 years ago. It remained largely untouched until a few years after the founding of New Orleans. At the time our story begins, this region was the Spanish territory of West Florida, which was not included in the Louisiana Purchase. The area, now known as Covington, was transferred by Spanish land grant to Jacques Drew, a New Orleanian. Drew recognized it as a natural location for a town, situated at the junction of three rivers and several trails. But in 1813, he sold the land to John Wharton Collins. On July 4th of that same year, Collins founded the town of Wharton. Three years later, when the state granted a charter, the name was officially changed to Covington. Collins' design is one of the more unique downtowns in all of America, characteristically European. Each block had an open square at the center. These squares have come to be called ox lots, and while that was not their original intent, they had at one time been used to hold teams of draft animals that hauled goods to town. In the early years, the waterways were both a blessing and a barrier. Though they repeatedly washed bridges out, the rivers became our lifeline of trade and transport. Communities worked together to build bridges and roads. In fact, Every able-bodied man was required to take part in road work for 12 days each year. Indian trails turned into trade routes. Since Covington was the furthest point inland that could be reached by river, it became the hub, the main trading center linking all points on land to the market in New Orleans and beyond. Schooners and steamers made several runs a week loaded with naval stores agricultural products, and construction materials. Much of New Orleans was built from the natural resources of St. Tammany. For years, the seemingly endless forests were harvested to make turpentine, tar, charcoal, and of course, lumber. Local clay deposits were made into millions of bricks, mortared with thousands of barrels of sand from our riverbeds. Cotton from the north of town and Mississippi plantations were shipped out of Covington, as much as 50,000 bales a year. At times, the streets were lined with wagons waiting for the schooners. Covington was at the center of commerce, industry, and trade. And in 1819, it became the center of government as the parish seat, with a courthouse and a thriving downtown. The boats left the landing at Columbia Street carrying cargo. They returned with supplies and settlers. The flow of people and commerce that came first by river exploded in 1888 with the arrival of the railroad. Tourism became a trend at the turn of the century. The area was dubbed the Ozone Belt, as it was surrounded by thick forests of longleaf pine. The refreshing air and the discovery of minerals in the spring water drew a stream of visitors seeking rejuvenation. To accommodate these many guests, Covington, like other towns on the North Shore, offered a selection of hotels and resorts. During the yellow fever epidemics in New Orleans, 
The only southern cities not quarantined were Atlanta and Covington. Thousands fled across the lake to safety. It seemed the disease could not thrive here. Not a single case is thought to have originated from the town. In 1890, an official government report designated Covington as the healthiest place in the United States. Our reputation as a health resort was sealed. Excursionists came by rail and by schooner to avail themselves of the healing environment. Electric trolleys met the boats at Mandeville and took passengers through Abita Springs and then on to Covington. They ran for years until the automobile signaled the end of boats and trains for pleasure trips to the North Shore. Regardless of how you arrived, one could find any number of congenial activities, plying the waters of the Bogavalaya River, dancing at the park pavilion, or simply strolling along scenic paths. We've been blessed with an abundance of natural splendor, qualities not diminished by the passage of time. There's always been something about this place, an air of culture and refinement, a sense of well-being, somehow difficult to define, yet impossible to deny. Gentility is woven into the fabric of our society. We enjoy the attributes of a small town with all the amenities of city life. We even celebrate our own brand of carnival. There have been times when it seemed we could lose it all in a flash. In November of 1898, a disastrous conflagration swept through the entire business district. The stores, the bank, the post office, and the new town hall were reduced to ashes. Again in 1906, another serious fire scorched homes and businesses. It provided renewed impetus for the volunteer firefighters to unite. Within three years, they had all joined forces to establish the Covington Fire Department. From the ashes, we did rebuild, and we kept on building and building until development itself became an issue. St. Tammany has been the fastest growing parish in the state. Over the years, we've endured a flood of change. Thankfully, most of the transformation has taken place beyond the boundaries of the city. We are an island amidst burgeoning growth. Through it all, Covington has managed to keep the essential core of our community intact. In many ways, we still convey the charm of a small town at the turn of the 20th century. We attract thousands of visitors each year to historic homes and old-fashioned shops, to restaurants and art galleries, to the many events hosted in the downtown district. Covington remains a vibrant community that has somehow struck a balance between progress and preservation. With one foot firmly in the past and the other stepping smartly to the future, we are today much as we have always been, a great place to live, to visit, to foster friendships and nurture families, to grow up, to be. As we contemplate our first 200 years, our earnest hope is to maintain the distinctive character that has sustained us through the centuries, that we may go on being that quaint community at the place where the rivers meet, where time is marked by the turning seasons, 
and the roots of history run deep. Our precious haven, our little old town, our Covington.